Good evening, Sundari ma'am. Shanmuga Sundari ma'am. Yeah, good evening, ma'am. Uh, Jennifer, ma'am. Jennifer, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I just uh, call you to make her co as a co-host, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, I haven't given the host yet. So let me wait, ma'am. Once it gets transferred, I'll make her. Uh, ma'am, she has made made. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, shall we start the meeting? Shanti, ma'am? Are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. That, ma'am, I'm here. Oh, okay, ma'am. Then we will start, ma'am. Okay. Can I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good evening to all. Jennifer, ma'am. With the prayer song? Yes, ma'am. It's there. Yeah. Uh, welcome you all. Let's begin the program with the prayer song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Good evening to all. With great joy and immense exultation, I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all connected here on the third day of lecture series on biotechnology and the Star College scheme sponsored by Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. I am profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce and welcome the chief guest of the day, Dr. Shanmuga Sundari. She is an alumna of St. Mary's College and completed her doctorate during 2014 under the guidance of Dr. Uday Kumari Kalavati. Her area of specialization is pterodophytes. Ma'am has published three books and authored 27 publications. Also, she has presented papers in several conferences. She has been rewarded with several awards, among which few are Best Women Scientist Award during 2016 and SS Bir Gold Medal Award for the year 2017 during the National Symposium on Pteridophytes held at Pune by the Indian Fund Society, Chandigarh. We have such a distinguished almana amidst us today. Welcome you, dear ma. I am profusely elated to take an opportunity to welcome our principal, Dr. Sister Jessie Fernando, Sex Secretary Dr. Sister Shibana, Director of Self-Supporting Courses, Reverend Sister Josephine Jairani, and Deputy Principal, Dr. Sister Kurandi Teres. I consider it a great honor to welcome Dr. Sister Arokya Janesia Sahalfons, Overall Coordinator, DBT Star College Scheme, and Head and Associate Professor of Botany. I also welcome all the faculty members. It's my duty to welcome Dr. Benjamin, a uh, scientist uh, uh, from BSI Pune. Your aptitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. I cordially invite the student participants. Welcome you all. It's over to you, dear ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, well, first, of, first of all, I would like to thank our institution, all the members and faculty members, and who's organizing this uh, organizing committee, and give this nice opportunity for me to uh, give out my presentation. Thank you, everyone, all the students. I am very much uh, thank you to all our students also. Okay, I would now I try to I would discuss it. Can you see my screen, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Then. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Shanmu Sundari from the UR College, old student. Uh, I would like to discuss about conservation of plant diversity. All the types of living organisms have been rooted under the biodiversity of nature. Biodiversity, that is, what is biodiversity? That means life, that life means all the type of living organisms, plants, animals, and also the microbes, all are included under that life. Then diversity means variety. Variety and variability among the living organism, it's known as a biodiversity. Then all that in that biodiversity, all the living organism species are interconnected. It is dependent to each other. So for 
example that soils are very much useful for the plant growing that plants are uh, important to that uh, uh, human beings and animals and that insects are uh, used for that pollination and uh, everything all the species are interconnected if anything is disturbed any organism is disturbed the whole ecosystem will be disturbed so that uh, it is very important our that richness of the biodiversity that means animals and plants are rich in one places that is known as the hot spot mm -hmm. in whole world wide ma'am in whole world wide nearly 36 hot spots are present in whole world wide in india Four important hotspots are there. That is Himalaya, Western Ghats, Indo-Burma, and Sudaland. These four hotspots are present in India. Then plant diversity in India. In, there is in India different types of climatical regions are present. For the different type of climatical region, different types of plants also, the plants are also very rich presence in India. So in India, the plant diversity, 12 coming under the 12 mega biodiversity nation, in whole area, 24.62 percentage of forest area is present in India. In, in rank wise, that uh, plant diversity, India got a uh, hold on uh, fourth rank in Asia. In worldwide, it's got 10th ten, rank. Then you are well known about that plant kingdom. Normally, plants are classified into two important groups that is non flowering plant and flowering plant. Non flowering plants that means it's coming under Thallophyta, Bryophyta, Pteridophyta are coming under that non flowering group. It's uh, algae, fungi, and lichens are classified under the thallophyta. Thallophyta is classified into algae, fungi, and lichen. Under the flowering plants, gymnosperm and angiosperms, the flowering plants are divided into two groups, that is gymnosperm and angiosperms. Now we see about the diversity. Under that algal diversity, it's classified into six groups based on that color. That means algae have some green algae, blue algae, red algae, likewise that color. It's classified into six division. And also that morphological structure, it's classified into to unicellular algae colonies and filamentous and multicellular organism in worldwide here that 40,000 species have been reported in alga then uh, in India 2,500 species have been reported likewise fungal diversity based on this reproduction that is sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction it is classified into four categories that is bicomyces, ascomyces residuomyces and deuteromyces. This deuteromyces is coming under that ase asexual reproduction. Other three, thing, uh, three uh, uh, groups are coming under that sexual reproduction. There is in worldwide 72,000 species have been reported in worldwide. In India, 23,000 species have been reported. Five, these are the macro fungi. There is a number of uh, different types of macro fungi. There is mushrooms are present in that. In this, it shows that different types of mush macro fungi. Then lichen diversity. The lichen diversity, based on its structure, it is classified into four groups. There is cryptos, scumulus, foliar and fructicus. These four types are based on its structure. It's classified into four groups. Here are the 13,500 species in worldwide. In India, 2,223 species have been reported. Uh, likewise, biodiversity, there are three important uh, groups are that one is hornworts, liverworts, and mosses. There is a uh, uh, hepatic opsida. This one is androxerapsida, it is hepatic opsida, it is by bryopsida. These three types are very important in this bryophyte. Here, 18,600 species have been reported. In India, 2,843 species have been reported. Like 
pteridophyte uh, uh, under the pteridophyte classification uh, from that pteridophyte is very important because from this pteridophyte onwards that vascular tissue sort started developed so it is coming divided into four category the two important category that is fan allies and fan that means microphyllous uh, leaves are present in that that is only single branch that that is single midbane is present that that is known as a fan allies the three groups are coming at that is silopsida lycopsida and siphonopsida these three groups are coming under that fan allies. Then last one is dryopsida. It's coming up, uh, that is filicopsida. It's coming under that fan group. Nearly 12,000 species have been reported in worldwide. In India, 1,107 species have been reported. Gymnosperm diversity is classified into four groups. That is Coniferopsida, Psychodopsida, Gingopsida, and Gnetopsida. Here, 650 species have been in worldwide. In India, 78 species have been reported. That is uh, angiosperm diversity. There is this is big diversity. That means in eighty eight percent in plant kingdom, eighty eight percentage of species are occupied in this uh, angiosperm diversity. There is two lakh sixty thousand species have been reported in worldwide. In India, thousand eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty nine species have been reported. This is mono, um, normally it's classified into two main groups that is monocotyledons and dicotyledons. These are all the plant diversity. These are all well known. Your yeah, people are well known about this. That, but our Indian diversity is rich, but nowadays it is coming under the threatened category. That why it's coming under the threatened category. That is four important main reasons are present there. What are the four important reasons? The first one is human activities, that is population and deforestation, forest fire. Because of that population here, we cultivate the crops, that whole mountain, and we occupy that place for shelter. Because of this reason, that whole place, that whole mountain organisms, that is species are totally vanished for this and also the development that national highways and um, that is uh, express highways factories development for this also one of the reason for that that plants are going to be threatened categories so, so human activities because of these human activities that plants are going to be threatened category. That next natural calamities. That means uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a uh, cyclone, uh, then uh, landslide and volcano, storm wind and earthquake. All are the reasons for that. Uh, then uh, that plants are going to be threatened categories. Next is invasive species. This is very important. What is invasive species? That means it is not our native species. That is, that species is not our native species. It is introduced by some other country. For example, Senna sectapolis, these plants, you can see that uh, you can absorb these plants anywhere. Here, nowadays in India, the South Indian, South Indian places, that is Nilehiri, Biosphere, and Bayanad, the whole uh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, that places are, these plants are fully occupied that. These species are grown very fastly, that America is introduced this plant into our country. Country. What is that uh, negative reason? That is reason means that a species um, where that species are developed, that place you can't find out that any other species. That means it's totally no other vegetation could be seen on that places. It's totally spoiled the other organisms. That means need that uh, leaves, flowers, and leaves it's dried off, and it releases some chemicals that chemicals totally destroy the plants under the uh, soil. It spoils the soil fertility for that grass and herbs are totally wiped out. Now that one ecosystem is 
totally damaged then the next one is also start to be damaged now because because of this that uh, herbivores are taken their food from that uh, producers but here it's totally affected so that plants next ecosystem also totally damaged but in india 170 species of invasive species are nowadays we can see 170 species this is the one of the main reason it is a big challenge to our forest department to destroy that num nearly 37 a uh, percentage of uh, uh, percentage of places are occupied this invasive species so it is a very important work to vanish that invasive species in our land that is this is the main reason for that plant, our Indian plant diversity is going to be the threatened category. The next one is the intrinsic factors of threatened plants. That is, in, I give that example in pteridophytes. Pteridophytes, number of uh, common characters are present. That is, a chlorophyllous spores, terrestrial plant creeping, and polyploid. These all the uh, common characters are present. Some advanced type of character that is chlorophyllous spores, epiphytes, lithophytes, erect, and diploid. These all the characters. Because of these characters, that plants going to be a threatened or endangered category. That is, for I give that example for this Gramitis medialis. This plant is a chlorophyllous spores. This spores are a vivipari condition. That means that chlorophyllous spores inside that sporangia, before it disposal, it start to develop. So it's inside that sporangia, the spores are developed. Uh, and when it's released the spore, the, when the sporangia dispose and release the spores, it's all the spores are died. One or two spores only start to develop. So because of this reason, it is coming under the endangered category. Always lithophytes and uh, presence is bearable. <laughs> the trisomes are going, that uh, plants are developed. But erect trisome, if it's present, that only one plant's developed from that place. So these all the reasons are one of the uh, one of the uh, point for that that plants is coming under the threatened category. So because of that reasons, all that is human activities, natural calamities, invasive species, and also that intrinsic factors, some factors present inside that plants, these all the characters are one of the reasons for that plant diversity is going to be threatened categories. Okay. Now that conservation is very important. That a plant is continuously going to be extinct condition, it's totally spoil our whole ecosystem. So conservation is very important. That is based on this conservation. Conservations are two types. One is in situ conservation, another one is ex situ conservation. Here in situ, that means inside that situation, that plants is collected from the plant from that habitat and it's conserving the same habitat <clears throat> that is known as a in situ conservation. Then ex situ conservation means that a plant is collected from that place and it's conserved in that uh, laboratory on the other garden that is known as a ex situ conserve out of the nature, out, out of that habitat, we conserve the plant that is ex situ conservation. Here that uh, you can see, observe that, uh, that in that plants are collected from that forest area and inside that area, inside that nature, it um, cultured. So it is inside to conservation. Uh, is examples for inside to conservations are national park, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserve, and scarred groups. These are the examples for inside to conservation. And inside to conservation, Zoological Park, Botanical Garden, Gene Bank, and Cryopreservation Bank. Here, that is for uh, uh, these are the map uh, shows that uh, that uh, national parks in India, hundred and six national parks are there, uh, and uh, in biosphere fifteen biosphere reserve places are there, and uh, for high hundred and sixty six wildlife sanctuaries and fourteen thousand scat groups. These all the areas are protected area and prohibited area. So all the plans are very safe. Because 
because of, uh, of our forest department, it, we, uh, that department protect all the places and uh, um, uh, conserve that species. Uh, but um, if you wanted to uh, do the research, we have to get the permission from the forest department, then only we can collect the species for our research purposes only. Then uh, exile to conservation. That is, when the plants are collected from that endangered and uh, rare species are collected from the forest and we conserve in our garden or in the lab. This is uh, tissue culture lab. This is, there is tissue culture is the one of the technique for exile to conservation. Tissue culture means then plant tissues are collected and it's under that sterilized media under the aseptical condition it's uh, uh, generate that new plant that is known as a plant tissue culture herbal land is the folder of plant tissue culture the, that main technique is each and every plant cells have a capacity to reproduce that young one that that means a single cell can reproduce uh, uh, that young one young plants that is uh, known as a totipotency energy this energy is very much useful for this uh, plant tissue culture technique these are the basic requirement for tissue culture laboratory that is area equipment and materials that what what are the types of areas that are needed for that tissue culture if you wanted to construct one tissue culture lab means if these areas should be present in that place that is washing area media preparation area chemical storage area inoculation area incubation area and greenhouse these should be present in that tissue culture lab and what are the instruments required for the plant tissue culture means that is glass verse uh, bathing balance and shaker ph meter hot air oven microwave and autoclave double distal unit and uh, that micro pipettes for preparing that mm, uh, media and uh, there is inoculation chamber and incubation chamber then material record material record for the tissue culture here glass was explants and media these three materials are important material and also we have to be sterilized in different ways. That is that the test tubes or that is test tube and co that a conical flask and glass was all are washed with the uh, washed with the detergent and uh, fully washed with the uh, running tap water. Then it's dried off and it's dry under the hot air oven, 180 degrees centigrade for two hours. Now that uh, after uh, that, the, that um, uh, test tubes are collected and it's again it sterilized in the autoclave and keep it under the bundle in that ante room for now that uh, test tubes or that glass was already for that in a uh, the, the, that is uh, uh, tissue culture. That likewise that explant collection is very important that the explants or uh, that this is free plant and highly uh, the, uh, the high um, quality plants and also the young tissues we have to be selected as a young tissues it is very much useful if you if it's mature it's not give a good result if it's young young tissues means it's give a very nice result, good result for the shoots, roots, nodes, and internodes, leaves, all of the uh, coming in the explant. In that plant, explants are collected and it's washed with the 2020. And after that, it is sterilized with the mercury chloride. Then it's uh, 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 under the running tap water, 15 minutes, we have to be washed that material. Then it be transferred to the inoculated uh, area. Inside that inoculated area, we have to be sterilized under the uh, double distilled water for five minutes. Then we remove that plant material and cut it into small pieces and, and remove that all that uh, water particle with the help of watchman filter paper. Now that material is ready for inoculation. Like was a then uh, media preparation. This is also the these are the uh, these are uh, involved in that media preparation. That is micronutrient, uh, macronutrient, micronutrients and uh, carbon sources, vitamins and amino acids and PGR for solidification. That agar agar these all are uh, very much useful for the media preparation 
we, with the help of this microwave oven, we prepare that media under the double distilled water. Then it's poured into the glass vase. Then it's uh, again it's uh, sterilized with the help of autoclave. Uh, after that, that uh, media prepared media is transferred to the inoculation chamber that uh, uh, that uh, when we prepare that material it is uh, liquid form after uh, we, after 12 hours only it's solidified uh, then the, uh, we uh, uh, that time only it's ready for inoculation then uh, next is these all the uh, media uh, that is macronutrients, micronutrients, and uh, uh, carbon source. That is sucrose is the source of carbon and vitamins, amino acids, plant growth regulators. That all are required for that uh, nutrient, that media. Then methods of this uh, tissue culture. That is collection of plant material. Already I explained how we collect the plant material and how we sterilize the plant material. Yeah, next is sterilization, the three types of sterilization, the material sterilization, that is glass was and explant and media sterilization. Next is that, um, that uh, explant is transferred into the media in the inoculation area. That inoculation, that is known as the inoculation. After that inoculation, that uh, glass was uh, transferred into that incubated area it is uh, 20 uh, controlled by the 25 degrees centigrade and 1200 lakhs in, in intensity uh, it's maintained on that place after that plants are developed uh, three or four months that plants are reach that uh, tissues regenerate uh, that new, uh, new plant then after that plant is developed that plant is step by step it transferred into the greenhouse uh, in, or in the polycup that is known as a hardening method that uh, the fifth method is the hardening method then that um, greenhouse plant is transferred into the natural condition that is known as a restoration these all the methods are involved in this tissue culture. Here, there is two important processes there. One is direct organogenesis, another one is indirect organogenesis. Direct organogenesis means from the explant that uh, shoots are developed, that shoot portion is developed, that is direct organogenesis. That from and that explant callus is developed, that is indirect organogenesis. Then that shoot is developed, then it is changed into the rooting media. Then uh, that full plantlets are developed, the plantlets is transferred to the polycup. Then after that, uh, that polycup, uh, that material step by step, it's transferred into that uh, natural condition. These already mentioned that uh, previous line. The next is that uh, a polycup plants are transferred to the greenhouse. This is the Kodakonal Botanical Garden greenhouse. This is the inner view of Kodakonal Botanical Garden. Then it's step by step reintroduced into the natural field. This is called the restoration. Tell me the stretch. This type of plants are uh, 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 tissue culture plants. It's re uh, uh, developed from that uh, tissue culture lab and it transfer into the natural field. Then a lot of uh, importance are uh, the uh, tissue culture method. That is, it is a season independent and also uh, how many plants you wanted to produce, you can produce. Then which type of plant, that is disease-free plants, healthy plants, then uh, quality-wise improved plants, all the types of things you can uh, uh, produce that with the help of this tissue culture method. And we, you can preserve the material with the callus form or uh, 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 re, uh, that uh, young shoots from we can preserve that material and also improve that quality. So biodiversity is very important in our nature. That is, uh, it is very much useful in ecological role. That is, it's maintain that uh, climate. There is a uh, species capture and uh, storage energy and produce and re decompose the organism matters. And it helps to the, uh, fix the atmospheric air. And also it uh, uh, helps to um, that a uh, part of a uh, water cycle. And also it is very much helpful for that nature, uh, 
that is regulate our climate with the help of if biodiversity is rich that place the climate is very nice that good it give up good climate and that environment is very nice and also it's very much useful for that economical way also so it's give a good food crop and cash crop fishes medicines all the uses with the help of this bio rich biodiversity it's give a good economic to that uh, our nation and also it's used in the scientific uh, role that uh, with the help of this we can uh, study that a uh, different diversity and also how it's the plants are evolved and how it will be evolved these all the systems or biodiversity is very important so with the help of that conservation um, that bio uh, biodiversity conservation it's give a lot of uses for us uh, nowadays lot of techniques uh, are developed well developed the techniques are well developed the science and technologies are well developed i am appreciate that the uh, techniques are developed but we have to be used in the correct way that is very important that uh, already we saw that the in nature way it couldn't do it at that time we use that technology that's give a good result but nowadays our human beings try to change that whole creations god creation is the best one we can't change that if we touch to change that creation it's totally uh, destroy our nature so our environment so uh, technology development is very nice but we can't change that creation so with the help of this uh, technique a uh, biotechnic that is all the techniques and also in nature ways we have to conserve our nature that is very important uh, conservation is very important the, our nature if our nature is good it is everything is good i wanted to give the quote conserve the nature to save your future it is our duty to save environment is our beauty Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, you can raise your doubts. <clears throat> Florama? Yes, Daffodil. Shall we proceed, ma'am? Uh, uh. Ma'am, can I take the screenshot right now? Okay, Jenny. Wow. Dear participants, dear participants, kindly switch on your cameras so that we can take a group photo with our resource person.
Thank you, participants. Uh, Flora, ma'am, you can take over, ma'am. Oh, okay. Dr. Sanmuga Sundari, distinguished alumni and respected resource person of today's lecture series on biotechnology and a Star College scheme sponsored by DBT, Government of India, New Delhi. Dear participants, warm greetings and a very good evening to everyone of you connected here. I feel much honored to thank on behalf of the Department of Botany to all the noble hearts who helped us to conduct this invited lecture successfully. First of all, my sincere thanks to Almighty God for making this event a grand success. I would like to acknowledge with gratitude to Dr. Sanmuga Sundari, former young scientist, DBT uh, young sci uh, scientist project, Pune for giving an excellent insight on conservation of plant uh, diversity. Importance of plant diversity, plant diversity threat factors, worldwide plant diversity numerical data, and several conservative techniques, and especially tissue culture techniques. Your discourse opened our students' eyes to a lot of things. We are grateful to you, ma'am, for providing our students with such valuable and urgently needed knowledge. I thank our secretary, Reverend uh, Sister Dr. C. Shibana, Principal Reverend uh, Sister Dr. Jesse Fernando, Director of Self-Supporting Course, Reverend Sister Josephine Jairani, and Vice Principal, Reverend Sister Dr. Kulande Teres, for their prominent leadership and administering support and encouragement in our endeavors. My profound gratitude goes out to Reverend Dr. Sister uh, R.K. Genesia Salfons, Head of the Department of Botany, Associate Professor, and overall coordinator of the Star College Scheme for being the creative force behind every venture that benefits the student community. I would like to thank the faculty members of the Botany Department sincerely for their support for the success of this program. My deepest thank goes to our technical arrangement team, especially Ms. Pauline Jennifer. Finally, and most importantly, I want to sincerely thank each and every student for their engaged and passionate participation. Definitely, I believe this lecture would have made an impact in participants. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Sundarima? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for accepting our invitation, ma'am. And thank you for your nice presentation. And we, uh, our department expects your continuous touch with us. Uh, whenever we need your expertise, we will call you, ma'am. Thank yeah, you sure, so I'm much, sure. ma'am. It's it my pleasure. It's my pleasure, ma'am. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah. Sandhari, ma'am, how are you? Ah, fine. How are you, ma'am? <laughs> fine. 